When I go fishing out on the kayak using a string of feathers, I'm usually targeting mackerel. But a few times a year, I like to deliberately go out to target herring. One, because it makes a pleasant change, and two, because I enjoy eating herring, and three, they make a very good bait for species that I target later on in the year. Now, to be successful at catching herring, you need to understand, have a little bit of an understanding of how they feed and what they feed on. They tend to feed on small crustaceans and krill, but would also feed on fry, very, very small fish. Therefore, to catch them, you need to scale right down on the size of the lure that you're using. So we, if we have a look at the, the mouth of a herring, you can see there that it's very, very small. And conventional mackerel feathers, although, although you can catch the occasional herring on them when you're fishing for mackerel, tend to be a little bit too big. The conventional mackerel feathers are usually on size 2.0 hooks and the feather itself is much, much bigger. Now, to give the, ch the herring a chance to take the lure into that very, very small mouth, and bearing in mind what they feed on, I scale right down. And what I use are these sort of speaky type or mini feathers. I mean, I featured these on, on several videos in the past because I also use them for mackerel. They will, of course, catch mackerel just as well as ordinary mackerel feathers. But the great thing about scaling down small is that you can catch other species such as herring. But as you can see there, they're very small. They're only, the actual lure itself is only about an inch and the hook is only size six. And therefore, the herring can get that into its mouth where it, it would struggle a little bit with a, with a with much, much larger, hook, larger hooks. So, th so that's the rig I use, but the actual rod itself is just a, just a normal lure rod with a small reel there. And I've got that loaded with 15 pound braid. And then to the end of that, a fluoro fluorocarbon leader and a string of, of herring feathers. Now you can buy these. This this is just, this these happen to be a five hook herring rig, but you can get them six hook. You could even get them eight and ten hook. But I find this is much more manageable. Now, again, as I, I as I featured in previous videos, rather than using the lead weight, I always like to use a lure. And this is not, of course, for catching herring. But this is just in case there are much, much larger, larger fish around feeding on the herring. For example, cod. It's well known that cod will actually, although they're bottom, mainly bottom feeders, they will come up to mid-water, into the water column, and feed on things like sprats and, and, and uh, pilchards, and of course herring. So if there are, are any much, much larger fish around feeding on the herring, then I've got a chance of catching them with this. So that's the reason I use that rather than the lead weight. Okay, so that's the rig. I've got two rods made up. Now I headed out yesterday to target herring. Um, unfortunately, it was tipping down a rain. So unfortunately on many, many of the shots, there's rain all over the lens and, and, I, thought, and I couldn't do anything about that. So I headed out main, just to target herring and let's have a look how I got on. target herring I normally find them the majority of them in the top half of the water column got 86 feet of water at the moment and I usually get them let's say about 30 feet up to the surface and often when it's very very calm you can see the herring breaking the surface as you can do mackerel at times but usually what I, what I, I get them in the upper part upper half of the water but just like mackerel you can get them right from the bottom to the top but what I've got, I've got two rods made up exactly the same. I'm going to manually work this rod 
and have that in the upper half of the water column. And when I say work this rod, once I've lowered it down, what I do is just, you don't need to do great big jigs like this. All, the, all I need to do is to just put a little bit of movement on those lures. You don't need a lot of movement and what, what you often find with herring, you can feel them plucking at the lure. And because they got that very, very small mouth, you've got to give them time to actually, even though those lures are very, very small, the ideal size for herring, you still got to give them time to actually get hold of the lure. Unlike mackerel, mackerel will come in and bang and hit it. With the herring, you hear, you, you can feel that pluck. And then when you feel that, it's just, just gently, don't, not up and down, severe like that just gently move it and then often you'll get them to take but one thing you've got to be careful with herring you've got to be a little bit gentle with them when you when you're pulling them up because, because they've got very gentle mouths small gentle mouths if you've only got one lip hook that it, it can just pull straight out so that's what we're going to do with that rod but with the other rod, what I'm going to do is lower that down. I'm going to fish this one a little bit deeper and just lower that down to the required depth. In this case, it's going to be in the bottom half of the water column. And leave that. And although it's not choppy today, it's fairly calm, there's still enough movement with the rod in the rod holder movement up and down movement of the kayak to get those lures to to work as i said you don't you don't need to you don't need to work them severely so we've got trying to maximize our ch chances two rods out and hopefully we'll be able to pick up pick up a few herring and with a bit of luck a bit, a bit of a few winter mackerel as well well that rain started again unfortunately but never mind it's just it's great to be out here well we're into fish here but the, um, I, don't, I think this is mackerel this is not herring it feels a bit too powerful for herring yep it's mackerel some lovely winter mackerel. Well, it feels like we're into our first herring. Just got to be a little bit gentle with them because, like I said, they've got quite delicate mouths. Yep. You've got to be a little bit careful getting them in because of that delicate mouth. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the herring, all the shoals shown on the finder, the herring are in the top half of the water. They're only about 30 feet down. A couple of herring, nice herring there. I mean, they're, they're not huge herring, but they're they're big enough. Well, that's what we're here to catch today, the lovely, beautiful herring, otherwise known as silver darlings. I mean, they're great eating. You can either, lots of ways you can cook them, you can grill them, shallow fry them, and or, but, or smoke them, of course. And um, I've got myself a smoker, so I'm hoping to do a bit of smoking, a uh, few smoke fish this year. But the other thing about herring is, they are a fantastic bait, being an oily fish. And where I'm fishing here in the foul estuary, if I can get hold of herring, I mean, if I can catch enough herring today, I'll freeze some down late for later in the springtime for bait. And they make a fantastic bait here for thornback ray. What I normally do is have half a herring. And the rays here, the thornback ray, seem to absolutely love them. Uh, yeah, but they, <coughs> there's that tiny little mouth that we mentioned earlier about why, why you have to have the suitable tackle very very small delicate mouth and 
they're not easy to catch damn sight easier to catch of course if you've got a net but rod, rod and line they're not easy to catch you really do have to have those tiny little feathers and tiny little hooks but even then then they're not easy to catch and very easy to lose when you do hook one if you've only got it lip hooked if you're a bit hard on it and they're very very easy to to pull the hook out the hook out of their mouth but it's not a big hair a big hair in there's a a few lot bigger ones than this but well over the size limit the size limit here in Cornwall is 20 centimeters about eight inches and this one this one's about measures about 10 inches but uh, hopefully hopefully we'll get get a few few big ones but the majority that I've caught today the few that I've caught today have all have all been about about that size well, it just goes to show that just popping a rod in the rod holder as an additional rod and just leaving it in the rod holder to be moved by the up and down mover of a kayak works. And I've got a few got a herring on the other rod. And also of course works for mackerel as well. You don't always have to physically work the rod. I mean it is but it is better when you physically the results are better when you physically work the rod but you can if you want another rod out just pop it in the rod holder and like I've done and and there you go you can still catch herring without a, a lazy way of catching herring I suppose you could say. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get get to you on uh, camera the take of a herring. The herring at the moment on the finder are, are showing at around 20, between 20 and, and 40 feet. And what I'm doing is just gently, gently moving the lures. And what you get is you get that little little knock when they're trying to take the lure into, into that very very small mouth of theirs and when you get that knock you've got to be just a little bit little bit patient what I'm doing at the moment I can see as the shoals of herring are moving moving under I can see them on the finder and I'm just moving up and down to the sh into the shoals Sometimes I'll get a shoal, there, there, a little knock, knock there, can you see that? Dut, 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 and then you got, and boom, it's on. So you get a little, little, little tap, a little knock, and you just got to be, just got to give it that time to get that little, little lure into, into the mouth, into its mouth. And it's off. Well, that that often happens because they got such small, delicate mouth, mouths. We we'll try and we we'll try and get that again. It's going down and in, down into the shoal now. I'm just stopping it and then just gently, gently moving the rod. It's the shoal coming through. There it goes. Tap and. And, and we're on. Just a little tap, and then just give it give it a bit of time, and then usually they'll come, they'll take it. Well, the rod fishing itself has has caught again. Sounds like we got more than one on. It feels like we got more than one on. Yeah, we have. And, and there you go. And the other rod. While I was playing that rod, the other rod's going now, and that's just fishing it. That's just fishing itself. So I've got a string, a string here on one, on one rod. Oh my God. 
rod and the other rod going as well. And the tide, the tide has turned, and uh, they seem to be coming on the feed now. Actually, and they're, they're getting a, a bit bigger as well. Well, I'm intending to fish for another hour, but the, it's coming in really horrible now. It's really grey and it looks like we've got some heavy rain on its way. It hasn't stopped raining for the whole session, but I'm going to get on in before the rain really starts to get to me and I start getting really cold. But as you can see, I persisted and I've got a nice box of herring there. And a couple of mackerel as well as a little bonus, but mainly targeting the herring today. So for those of you that have never actually fished for herring before, give it a go. It's a great alternative to just using feathers for mackerel all the time. As long as you use those mini feathers, those tiny little feathers with the tiny little hooks that imitate the little fry that the herring will feed on, and it's small enough lures to be it for the, for the tiny mouse of the herring, you stand a good chance of catching them. And particularly if you if you focus on the upper parts of the water column. Today, I've caught them, all of the herring from mid water up to the surface, just very, I've been trying different depths, but usually mid water up to the surface. You can get them and do get them down on the bottom. But usually if you focus on the mid-water upwards, that's where you're most likely to catch the herring. So we get these home and uh, none of these will be wasted. Some of them will be frozen down and used later on in the year as bait for thornback rays. And the rest of them will be eaten, some fresh and some frozen. So apart from the fact that it's been peeing down a rain all day, which has made it a bit uncomfortable. As always, always great to get out here and do a bit of fishing, particularly recently because it's been so difficult to get out. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.